Does your furry friend take over your bed every night? It's time to reclaim your space while giving them the comfort they deserve with the coldest, cozy dog bed. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description to buy now on Amazon. Wildlife officials revealed to a frightened public the fate of the shark that maimed two people on a Texas beach on July 4th. The attack happened on South Padre Island, Texas, on Thursday morning, with the woman who got bit on the leg having to be hauled to shore by a team of rescuers. Following the bloody incident, South Padre Island and Cameron County Parks officials located the shark, harnessed it and moved it back out into deeper waters so it won't be an ongoing threat to beachgoers, KFDX-TV reported. New helicopter footage released by the Texas Department of Public Safety shows officials flying directly over the shark as it swims through shallow waters right after the attack. Identified as a bull shark, the animal was not harmed or physically injured over the course of this operation to get it back out to sea, according to Captain Dowdy from Texas Parks and Wildlife. Dowdy said the unusual attack was likely caused by weather changes from incoming Hurricane Barrel which will strike the Texas coastline sometime Monday as a Category 1 hurricane, according to the National Hurricane Center. Bull sharks can reach up to 11 feet in length and have one of the most powerful bites in the animal kingdom, stronger pound for pound than the infamous great white shark. A total of four people encountered the shark in the water, according to initial reports. Two people were bit and two people escaped with minor injuries. One woman had a serious wound to her leg. Footage of the attack shows the woman laying on the sand while a dorsal fin can be seen swimming back and forth near the shoreline. Blood from her wound can be seen turning the water a dark red, while first responders wrap a tourniquet around her leg. Later, this woman was identified as Tabitha Sullivan, who was in the water with her daughter and husband when the shark preyed on them. She said they were out past a sandbar when the shark followed her to shallow water and bit her calf, after which her husband Carrie fought it off. I turned around and saw something dark in the water. And I thought it was a big fish and I was going to kick it away. That's when it grabbed me, Sullivan told Fox Dallas Fort Worth from a hospital bed. The shark bit off her calf. My leg is pretty much gone, she said. They flushed it out today. It's all the way to the bone. It did not go through the bone. Her husband, too, was bitten throughout the course of the attack, but his injuries were minor in comparison. If my husband didn't jump into action and everyone else on the beach. If I didn't have people pulling me out, not just to pull me out but jumping between the shark and me, I don't think it would have stopped, she said. The couple were at the beach celebrating their daughter Skylar's 15th birthday. Skylar set up a fundraising page on GoFundMe to help raise funds for her mother's recovery. More than $4,600 has been donated so far. Their daughter Skylar Sullivan shared an update on their condition later that evening on Facebook. My mom is trying to get as much rest as she can and figure out the road ahead. Recovery will be a long process but I know she will get through it, Skylar wrote on Facebook. Immediately after the attack, Texas Parks and Wildlife released a statement telling beachgoers that authorities were patrolling the beach by land, by boat and by air. The city also considered closing the beach entirely to the public. In March, a 14-foot great white shark was spotted near South Padre Island, according to local radio station KNFM. But given that officials are reasonably confident that the culprit in the most recent attacks was a bull shark, it's likely that this great white wasn't involved. This comes after two teenagers and a woman were attacked by a shark early last month in Walton Beach, Florida. According to the Walton County Sheriff's Office, 45-year-old Elizabeth Foley was bit by the marine animal in the water near Water Sound Way and Coopersmith Lane at around 1.15 p.m. She sustained significant trauma to the midsection and pelvic area and amputation of her left lower arm, according to South Walton Fire District Fire Chief Ryan Crawford. At around 3 p.m., officials responded to calls of another shark attack on two female teenagers, 15 and 17 years old, that occurred four miles away from the first attack. The teens were later identified as Lulu Gribben, who lost a hand and